The OnePlus 10T has worse camera specs than the 10 Pro, and none of that fancy Hasselblad camera tuning. Maybe Gcam can really help this year. And how does the 10T hold up against the excellent camera system from the S22 Ultra? Let's find out in this OnePlus 10T camera test. Let's look at a bunch of test shots, including selfies, night shots, and video. Then I'll show you which Gcam port was used and the settings for both camera apps. This first close-up of wet leaves is not a macro shot. Don't use the macro camera on the 10T. And already we see Gcam improving over the stock OnePlus camera app. It's brighter with more saturated colors. Spooky Halloween sign shot. And this is tougher. The stock OnePlus camera is a bit more saturated, but it's also darker and it's having a hard time retaining detail. I'd still say Gcam wins here. Look at this fence that isn't doing anything. Gcam wins again since stock cam is still lacking detail and contrast. The lazy bed dog shot is interesting. Not because there's any contest between the apps. Gcam definitely wins, but because Gcam Gcam is slower to capture and process photos. Sure, it's sharper, brighter, and more saturated, but if you really have to snap a critical moment of a child, pet, alien abduction, etc., then you still might be better off with the stock camera, which is twice as quick. Don't give up on the stock OnePlus camera yet, since it does perform better with this white building image. It's more saturated and brighter compared to Gcam, but Gcam does still manage to be a bit more detailed. Christmas toy model figure decorations, and Gcam wins easily. If you were thinking that the lack of detail in other stock cam shots was a result of the apps focusing on different parts of the scene, you were wrong. From the back of the scene where the townspeople's water tower has tragically frozen to everyone's favorite jolly Christmas fire station in the foreground, Gcam is just more crisp. The blue chair shot is closer, with the most significant difference being color this time around. Stock cam is far too red. I honestly don't think either camera app did a good job here, but stock camera blows out the highlights from the white flowers so it loses. Stock cam comes back and wins with the rainbow umbrella though. It is a little oversaturated, but I prefer that to Gcam's flatter look this time around. On to selfies from the main rear camera, and I'll take the stock cam over Gcam. Gcam just doesn't quite light my wondrous face well enough. Rear cam with portrait mode, same story, except the stock camera does blow out the sky, but no strange detection issues or artifacts in either image. Now to the selfie camera, and though stock cam is brighter once again, I prefer Gcam this time. Better saturation and contrast. With portrait mode, it's very similar. Before we get into night mode, video, and the S22 Ultra comparison, please give this video a like if you found it helpful. So, Gcam ports vary in how they perform in different categories on different devices. This port from Parrot is pretty weak with night mode, as this rear camera selfie shows. The selfie camera is at least brighter from both, but stock cam wins, even though the selfie display flash fails to capture my most flattering features. This fire hydrant usually looks terrible, but the 1980s orange street light that was above it just got upgraded, so now it looks great, especially from the stock camera, which crushes the shadows, but still looks sharper than Gcam. A cool feature from this Gcam port is astrophotography, but don't mistakenly use it, like I did, for regular night mode shots. It will absolutely deliver a brighter photo than stock cam, but clearly you'll need to stick your phone on a tripod to effectively use that feature. But just in general, stock cam does do a pretty good job here. Last shot, with the stock camera coming out ahead as usual, and again, it does a good job. For video, I almost never give Gcam the win, but I will this time, better exposure and color, even though it's not as stable as the stock footage. There is a movie mode setting that works nicely on the OnePlus camera app, but I tested with the stock video mode that I think most users will end up shooting with. Selfie video from the selfie cam is very similar, but amazingly Gcam will shoot selfie video at 4K, while the stock camera is limited to 1080. This is a feature OnePlus really needs to add in an update. I mean the 10T is already missing 8K video recording, and that awesome 120 FPS 4K K slow motion from the 10 Pro. Here's the same test with Filmic Pro, and it shoots selfie video at slightly higher resolution than 1080, but doesn't look noticeably different from the other apps. If you really want to take things further, you could use Motion Cam, which allows you to shoot raw video at an even higher resolution at up to 60 FPS, which most phones that I test can't handle at all. So the OnePlus 10T's cameras really are bad, but how do they compare to shots from the Samsung S22 Ultra? Now before you say anything, yes, of course, the Samsung has a superior camera system with more cameras that are actually worth using, but for this testing, we're just comparing the main and selfie shooters. The S22 Ultra's stock camera app basically cranks up Gcam more punchy, saturated look to the next level. You get a much more vibrant shot, but sometimes I do prefer the less overly processed Gcam images from the 10T. I will say that Samsung did an exceptional job with this lazy dog bed shot. Do you prefer the Samsung look? Let me know in the comments. Some of the S22 style can be dialed in with different Gcam ports, but not the hardware's additional resolution. 
For selfies, the S22 Ultra wins, hands down, whether you're shooting portrait mode or not, except for night selfies. I think the stock 10T cam produces a cleaner, more balanced image here, and I bet with some practice, could also look much better with the actual selfie camera, but check out how noisy the S22's selfie cam shot is. Uh, yikes. I don't know how much better the S22 looks than the 10T for this fire hydrant night shot, but it certainly is a much warmer image. Same story with the night van, but I give the win to the 10T for this pizza box figure controller scene. The Samsung is just too noisy. The S22 Ultra's punchy look carries over to video as well. I have to admit, the selfie cam video looks top tier. For some reason, the S22 Ultra had a hard time with Filmic Pro while I was testing, and it shows. I even had to lower the resolution to record anything. It was really strange, and not an issue I've had before. Both perform well with motion cam, The 10T camera app was kept at its default settings, and the Gcam port I used is from developer Parrot and can be found at the link below. All the shots were taken with HDR Plus Enhanced turned on. There are a lot of Gcam ports that will be compatible with this device, with many XML files specifically tuned for the 10T as well, so I suggest trying a few. Overall, the 10T's main and selfie cameras are pretty satisfying. If you like the 10T's camera performance and want to pick up one yourself, you should check out Wireless Place, since they have OnePlus devices as well as phones from Xiaomi. Samsung, Motorola, Poco, and more. I've bought a few phones from Wireless Place and they always ship fast and can ship internationally. They have great prices and include a US adapter for the charger if you need it. Please use my discount code PC10 when you check out. If you want to support the channel or just want to save a little money, a link to the site is in the description. You can check out my full OnePlus 10T review right up here when it's ready. And please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Also, feel free to comment with any questions you might have, and I will answer them perfectly. And I'm told there's no such thing as a dumb question.